Okay, so luckily there is no lecture today. We're not learning anything more. This is the last of it. And then we just have to prepare for the test. Okay, let me go on five. Oh, very good. No number one. Number two. So everybody knows how, if I give, okay, this problem is on the test now. If I give you three points, non-collinear points, you have to write the equation of the parabola going through it. That is on the test, it's not on. And that's going to be on Monday's quiz as well. You're going to have to do that. Everybody can do that? I guess this is not okay. <clears throat> okay, then number three. Okay. So here we have a well. Okay. This problem is on the quiz. I'm just going to change the numbers. A stone is dropped into a well. Although you don't see the stone hit the water, you hear it splash four seconds after it's dropped. So probably on the quiz, it would say three seconds. But since I told you that, it'll be two seconds. I'm just going to change the number. What is the distance from the top of the well to the surface of the water? The distance that an object falls is given by this formula. And you guys in physics, this should look familiar to you. Right? Kinematics. What, what, what is 4.9? What, what, what is that? That's 1 half G, right? <coughs> so do you guys have 1 half G in your kinematic formulas? Or do you guys call it A? Whatever. Anyway, that's what it is. If you guys not in physics, it doesn't matter. I give you the formula. You don't need to know anything. Sound travels at 340 meters per second. Okay. How do we write an equation? Well, you drop a stone. Would you agree the time it takes for the stone to go down plus the time it takes sound to travel up is equal to four seconds? Because you hear it four seconds later, right? How many people got this problem? Two people. Did you get it? Three people. You guys did it this way? Or you just did write all kinds of equations and you solve them? This is probably the easiest method to do. The time for the rock to go down plus the time, the time for sound to go up got to equal four now. How do I figure out the time to go down? Because, Mr. Park, I don't know what the length of the well is. Well, that's what you're trying to find, so that's why you call it x. Okay, is, if x is the length of the well, how do I figure out the time it takes the rock to drop to the bottom? Which formula do I, do I use? This one right here. This is the distance a rock travels. Except, what is x then? What is x in, in this formula? That's the d. That's not, it's not time. It's the distance that it travels. So the distance that the rock travels is equal to 4.9 t squared. Can I figure out the time it takes for the rock to drop? Yeah, just solve for t. So how do you solve for t? t squared equals x over 4.9. Therefore, t equals square root of x over 4.9. How come not plus or minus, Mr. Park? Well, it's supposed to be plus or minus, but time cannot be negative. It cannot have negative time. So does everybody agree that the time it takes the rock to fall x meters is this? It's the square root of x over 4.9. Yeah, that looks familiar from kinematics too, Mr. Park. Okay, now how do we figure out the time it takes the rock to go up? What formula do I use? Rate times time equal distance, right? Okay, when the sound travels up, what is the rate? Do we know the rate of sound? Yes, I gave it to you in the problem. What does it say? 340 meters per second. And what is the distance that the sound travels up? X. That's the length of the well that we don't know. So therefore, the time it takes the sound to travel up is equal to X over 340. Yeah, so x over 340. So the time it takes the rock to fall plus the time it takes sound to travel up is equal to 4 seconds. That's your equation. And notice that there's only one variable to solve for. Now you get to use your calculator because look at these numbers, they're crazy. So those of you who did the problem, what did you do? I have a radical. Did you isolate the radical at square both times? Quark. E. I didn't do it exactly like that. What did you do? I made a quadratic. Oh yeah, but it, can you see that when you move this on this side and you square both sides, you're going to get a quadratic, right? Yeah. 
Okay, whatever, okay. You guys just are writing different equations. Okay, whatever. It doesn't matter. I'm just showing you the most efficient way now. You get to use your calculator. So if you're faced with this equation, what are you gonna do? This this is on Monday. You get, this is you Monday when you take the quiz, what are you gonna do? You get to use your calculator. What are you gonna do? Move this on this side, square both sides, and then you get a quadratic, and then I'm gonna use the quadratic formula with all these ugly numbers. Yes, you can. But do you know that your calculator can solve any equation? I'm sure your teachers taught you last year, right? Your calculator can, you know it, what is this? <coughs> Did you guys have the class set? Mr. Rubash said he taught you guys. I just talked to him this morning. <coughs> he told me too. That's given. You guys never worked with a class set of graphing calculators. <laughs> Woo! Anyway, you can solve any equation on your calculator. I'm going to show you how right now. Take out your calculator. Yes, you can use the quadratic formula, but if you have your calculator, use your calculator to its full potential. You can solve any equation, not just quadratic equations, any equation on your calculator. All you have to do, I'm going to just teach you the easiest way so to save time. First step is to make one side zero. So everybody can bring the four over, right? Make it zero. And then what you do is you graph it on your calculator. So press the Y equal button. And for those of you with the prism, you got to someone get into the graph. Is there a graphing mode? Go into the graphing mode. So press this. Y1 is equal to the square root of X over 4.9 plus X divided by 340 minus 4. So you make one side 0 and you graph it on your calculator. Now what do you think we're going to look for? Where the graph crosses the x-axis, because where it crosses the x-axis, isn't the y-coordinate 0? Right, because we made it equal to 0. We want to know when is it equal to 0. Well, when it crosses the x-axis. So if you graph it on your calculator, you should see something that looks like this. Right here, right where it crosses the x-axis, that's your answer. That's your answer. Okay, now here's the problems that you're going to have. Uh, Mr. Parker, just press the graph button. I don't see anything. That's because you should never, ever just press the graph button because you don't know what the window is. Anyway, those of you with TI calculators, since you don't know like who used your calculator before or what the window is before, you should always go back to the default settings. And to put your calculator into the default settings, which, which zoom do you do? You go zoom 6. Zoom standard puts everything back in the default settings. Now, what is zoom standard? Zoom standard just graphs from negative 10 to 10 on the x and negative 10 to 10 on the y. Yo, Mr. Berg, I don't see anything. Yeah, we're just doing that to put everything back to the default settings. Now, those of you with the prism, what? Can you get a graph on your calculator? Prism, people. You see the graph? Oh, okay, so now here's the key. We have to find where the graph is crossing the x-axis. So if you don't see it, you got to change the window. Okay? So we'll press the window button. Okay, where's your window? On the prism, you guys know where the window button is? Okay. Now, what do you think I should make my window? On the x-axis, what should I do? Do I even care about negative numbers? Do you think the well can be a negative length? No. So, zero. So, x min, you should make zero. x max. Okay, here's the key. If 10 is too small, then try 100. If 100 is too small, then try 1,000. Okay, so let's try 100. And then what about y min and y max? Now remember, we have to see the graph crossing the x-axis. It's got to go from negative to positive or positive to negative. So what do you think I should make y min and y max? Negative something and positive something so that you can see the graph crossing. Just try something. And then you guys know what the scale is? The scaling is how many hash marks you want to see. So if your scaling is 1, then from 0 to 100, it's going to put 100 hash marks. So you know what I usually do? I don't even like to see hash marks. So just make the scaling 0. So x min 0, x max 100, scale 0. It's up to you if you want to. If you, see, if, if your calculator puts in 100 hash marks, all it, it just looks like a bushy eyebrow. Like that. <laughs> 
That's what your calculator is gonna do. You like bushy eyebrows? Okay, then keep scaling one bit. Y min negative 10, Y max 10. It doesn't have to be this. You could have gone negative five to five, but whatever. And then Y scaling zero. Or if you like to see hash marks, then keep it one. Then just gonna put 10 hash marks there. Whatever. Now, does everybody see the graph crossing the x-axis? Okay, now, when it crosses the x-axis, that's your answer. This is the answer to this equation. Now, for TI people, how do you get that? Calculate. Everybody have this on the screen? I want to see what it looks like. Is it going upward? Hey, yeah, I guess correctly. Okay, how do I calculate this zero? You calculate the zero. So, second, calculate. You guys did that? Second, calculate. Select zero. Okay, what does it say? Left bound. Left bound means move the cursor somewhere to the left of that x intercept there. So using your left and right arrows, move the cursor somewhere to the left. Press enter. Then it says right bound. Move the cursor somewhere to the right of that point. Press enter. It says guess. Should I guess? No. You just press enter again. And your calculator will give you the coordinates of that point correct to five decimal places. So on the bottom of your screen, it's going to say x equals something, y equals something. Hopefully it says y equals zero because duh, it's on the x-axis, right? What is the x-coordinate? What does it say? Here, I'll just look at the answer at the bottom. It should say 70.484. Remember, whenever you use your calculator, you've got to give three decimal places accuracy. I'm sure it gives more, but you've got to round it to three places. If you give me less decimal places, I assume the last digit is zero. Which means you're four thousands off, that's minus four off your answer then. Usually you get minus one for every thousand you're off. So does it, yes or no? Everybody got that? Now for the prism people, it's actually easier, right? You just calculate the zero, boom, the thing spits out the answer. You don't have to press any other buttons. Does it say, is it, is it zero? No, it's not. Uh, No, 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 moves red. I don't even know about this prism, but I know you just press like the zero button and boom. Because you know what happens on the prism? What if the graph crosses the x-axis many times? You press zero, boom, it tells you that one. Then you press it again, it gives you that one. And then you press it again, it gives you that one on the prism. Whereas on the TI, you got to calculate each one individually by doing that left bound, right bound thing. Because I was fooling around with the prism one time I was in the bathroom, I had nothing to do. <laughs> That's what happened. So you guys with the prism, you guys did you guys get the 70.484 prism? You got the graph? Yeah. Okay, let me see the graph. Go G saw. It's like don't. Hey, G saw. Yeah. Where's your x-axis? G saw. Okay, you are not tracing now. Do not trace. How many of you are tracing? Because if you trace, okay, I'll give you a nickel. If you can trace and put the, put the cursor exactly on the x-axis, I'll give you all the money in my wallet. Which is not much, but I'll give you all. You cannot trace. You have to calculate the zero. Okay, so let me see your graph again. Where's your window? Is your window that, that window there? Okay, X min zero, X max hundred. Let me change that. Okay, hundred. Okay, no. Okay, that's good. Okay, okay. That, okay. Wait, 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 wait. You didn't increase this thing in radical. I don't think you punched. Okay, check. Go back. Yeah, go, go to the Y. Go to the Y equal. Yeah. Okay, just exit. Check exit. Okay. Yeah, see, look, the whole thing is in the radical divide. See, you know, prism people, you know when you punch in this square root of x over 4.9, you have to click the right arrow to get out of the radical before you move on. You did that. And it's not coming up. See what happens when you buy a, a bizarre calculator? Good. Okay, let me see your y equals sign. Okay, exit, exit. Where's your square root? Plus x over 340 minus 4. That's right. Okay, did you enter it? Okay, let me see your window. View window. 0 to 100. 
Negative thousand to thousand? That's why you're not seeing it. Just go negative ten to ten. Okay, now grab. There, see it crosses there. And then, okay. Okay, GSO. Is it GSO? GSO. Press five. Root. Like oh, there you go. Oh, Prism. <laughs> this is a good calculator if you know how to use it. You just press the button, the thing pops up. Okay, there you go. Okay, who else is having a problem with the Prism? It's always the Prism people. What? Yeah, but yeah, you, oh, you just press root and the thing just spits out the answer. Yeah, yeah they, they have root. What did yours say? No, don't. No, you don't. When did I ever say x count? No, then you put y equals zero and you get the answer. When did? No, you do root. What does root mean? Root means the x intercept. What is x count? It's so good. Go to your room. Give me your phone. Okay, can everybody do this? Oh my goodness. Okay, so on Monday's quiz. Oh, so Mr. Park, what if you say you drop the stone, but it takes three seconds until you hear the sound? See, since this is in your calculator already, just change it to a tree. <laughs> That's how you play the games. How can how can like anybody get this problem wrong? <laughs> Except last year, you know what I did? Instead of working with meters, I changed it to feet. <laughs> well, what is, yeah, but it, I'm going to give you the formula, so instead of 4.9 here, what's going to be there? Physics people. This is one half g, so if I work with feet instead of meters, what? What is it going to be? This number is going to be, who's in physics right now? What's the gravitational constant? 9.8 meters per second squared, right? But if you do it in feet, what is it? 32.2 feet per second squared. So then that, I'm just going to change that to 16.1 then, right? Is that going to throw you off? <laughs> well, apparently it did last year. It doesn't matter. I'm going to give you the formula. So look, you can just figure out, hey, this number came from there. This number came from there. Just edit what you got on your screen. You know what I'm talking about? Just like, just like the table one on, on you know, the one you had to make the table on yesterday's quiz? Didn't you guys just edit what you already had there? Apparently not, because we'll cut it off. Uh, okay, now, okay, who, so who are the clowns that were doing this x count thing? Who are the two clowns, Hayakawa and Mukai? Uh -huh. you, guys are, you guys were doing root. Because no. there's a button called root, right? You just press root, and the thing spits out the answer. It's like the same Mia Oka, did you press root, or did the clown away like that? Oh, root is easier, right? Don't you just it's press the, the root button? It's the same. Almost. Yeah, but you don't even know what x calc is. I calculate x value. Of what though? Graph. Where though? Where on the graph? How do you know right on the x axis? Because you put y equals zero. Oh, I get it. You you give them the y coordinate, and then the calculator spits out the x coordinate. But isn't that like an extra step? Whereas these people just pressing root, finished. Yeah. That's why you guys gotta play around with a look of time. Ten minutes left. We're in trouble. We're always in trouble with this class. Okay, so can you you repeat this problem? This problem is on this hundred percent. The probability is one that this is on the quiz. Okay? You don't even have to guess, I'm telling you. And I hope you guys remember that formula, the distance between a point and a line, because I told you since so many people missed that formula and have to put it on again. Okay, next. Oh, number four. Oh, this is the first year ever everybody got it. Usually, this is a, at least half the class that will get it, but then this must be the smartest year ever then in the history of pre-calculus honors. Also, don't have to do it, even though it's going to be on the quiz. No need to do it. Okay. Oh, now, now you want to do it. Oh, but if it wasn't on the quiz, don't need to do it. Then. Just for that, it's not on the quiz now. Okay, no need to do it. 
so I can copy it off my paper. There's a dirty here. Okay, we want to maximize revenue. Okay, now normally, normally, okay, I took this right out of your Algebra 2 book, this problem right here. Normally, you charge $24 for stereo headphones, and normally you sell 1,000 a a of them a week. So what is your normal revenue? $24,000. You guys know what revenue is, how much money you make, right? If you sell 1,000 headphones at $24 each, you make $24,000. However, you discover that every time you reduce the price by $1, you can sell 100 more headphones. So every time I reduce this by an increment of 1, this goes up by an increment of 100, like that. You guys get it? So if you reduce this by one, this goes up 100. You reduce this by two dollars, it goes up by 200. You reduce it by three dollars, you, you can sell 300 more headphones. What kind of function is this? It's quite whole. That's what we're studying. Yeah. No. It's a quadratic function. And what is the graph? Isn't the graph a parabola opening down, uh, opening downward? How do I know it's opening downward? Yeah, the leading coefficient is negative. So isn't there a place where you can you get maximum revenue? This is exactly what you'd study if you go, to, if you go into business, okay? So all you have to do is calculate the vertex of this parabola, and that'll tell you the maximum revenue you can make. So, okay, now here's the question. Or should I compute the, the vertex of the parabola? Should I multiply it all out and do negative b over 2a? Yeah, you can do that. But look, the thing is in factored form. If the thing is in factored form, that means you know what the x-intercepts are. What are the x-intercepts? 24 and negative 10. Oh, if the x-intercepts are negative 10 and 24, doesn't the vertex have to occur halfway in between? And what's halfway in between? How do you find halfway between two numbers? You take the average. It runs with heaven. 7. So that means when x is 7, that's when you're going to make the most money. So answer the question now. The question says, where's the problem? What price will maximize revenue? Isn't this the price right there? So if x is equal to 7, what is the price that you should charge? $17, 24 minus 7. So if you charge $17 per headphone, you're going to, that's the most money you're going to make. Does this look familiar from last year? Yeah, because I took it right out of your book. My teacher didn't give us that Okay, number five. Uh, I think we'll be seeing this problem again, too. Okay, how many people got it? Hey, very good. What about the rest of you? Uh, just write it on the board. Okay, I know. I'm, I'm, I'm up to your dirty tricks. That's okay. I'm used to it. Now, the reason that makes this problem so easy is because it goes on forever. If it didn't go on forever, then this problem is super hard. But since it goes on forever, easy. Now watch. Okay, I gave you a hint. I don't know what this number is. I'm going to call it x. In fact, I gave you the hint right there. Let the given expression be equal to x. Okay, now, what is, okay, here's the key part of the whole problem. What is x? The square root of 1 plus the square root of 1 plus the square root of 1 forever, right? Everybody got that? Okay. What did I just circle? X. That's X. Because that's the square root of 1 plus the square root of 1 plus the square root of 1 forever. This is one of those things about infinity. It goes on forever. So this is X. So then, therefore, you get 1 plus X equals X. Radical 1 plus X equals X. You guys get it? What is x? The square root of 1 plus the square root of 1 plus the square root of 1 forever. Therefore, that's x. Yeah, but then, Mr. Park, isn't that x also too? Yes, it is. That's what happens when things go to infinity. Okay, now you have an equation to solve. Easy, square both sides. It's a quadratic equation, Mr. Park. That's what we're studying now. Duh. 0 is equal to x squared minus x minus 1. Make one side 0. Oh, it doesn't factor, Mr. Park. Boo-hoo. Then use the quadratic formula, fool. x equal negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Box that. That's the answer. Oh, that wasn't that hard, Mr. Park. Minus 2. How come? 
Well, when I look at the answer on the bottom, Mr. Park, they don't have the minus one, so you've got to cross it out. <laughs> you better know why you're crossing it out. Why, why do you cross it out? If the answer is because that's what it says on the bottom, then go to your room. You're grounded. Why did I cross out the minus one? Okay, no, 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 no. Sometimes, what if both of these came out positive? Because sometimes they both come out positive. Okay, let me ask you this. What if it was this? Three plus or minus, they're both positive. Which one do I cross out? Just look at the bottom. What if there's no bottom? I'm like on the quiz. Why do I cross out the minus one? Somebody tell me this. I had five people got this problem right. Why did you cross out the minus? Yi. Kwa. Dang. Just stare at the board, pretend he's not calling my name. <laughs> what are you guys doing back there? <laughs> Chai. Okay, at least he's good. I don't, I don't know. Okay, would you agree that when you compute, this can only be one answer, right? How can you compute something and you get more, like this? Is that equal to six? Or six and something else? No, it can only be one answer, right? This this cannot be more than one answer, so which one is it? Okay, would you okay, let me ask you, we're running out of time already. What's the square root of one? One. And you're adding stuff to it. So would you agree that this answer gotta be bigger than one? See, I see plus signs, that's why, right? So the answer gotta be bigger than one. What's the only one that's bigger than one? That one. That's why you cross out the minus one. Not because they look at the bottom. Food. Go home cook rice if you're going to do that. Anyway, this is a very famous number in mathematics. This is called the golden ratio. But since we're running out of I wanted to do, tell you what the gold, who knows what the golden ratio is. One, two people. Okay, hopefully, don't know, because we have a quiz on Monday. Okay. Hopefully we have a discussion on the golden ratio at another time. Okay, because now we have six and eight, and now we're, we are in deep trouble. Anyway, how many people watched the video? So do you know, you know we deleted number eight then from the other class, yeah? Just cross out number eight. Why? Because we're special. Okay, number six. Okay, we've got two, less than two minutes to do this. Okay, the roots of this equation are R and S. Write a quadratic equation whose roots are r plus 1 and s plus 1. Okay, so one way to do the problem is actually compute the roots of this equation using the quadratic formula. It doesn't come out ugly. Add 1 to each of them, and then write a new equation where those are the roots, you know, using the negative b over a thing and the c over a that I taught you guys yesterday. By the way, that's probably going to be in the quiz too. But there's a faster way. Think of the graph. What is the graph of this going to be? Like if you graph this as you calculate, what do you see? It's a parabola opening upward. And the, the roots are r and s. We want to write an equation whose roots are r plus 1 and s plus 1. So r plus 1 and s plus 1. What does that mean? I have to shift the graph 1 to the right. Did we learn how to shift graphs 1 to the right last year? Yes, we did in algebra 1, right? What will shift the graph 1 to the right? Let me just tell you since we're running out of time. That. So all you have to do is substitute x minus 1 for x like this. That's your answer right there. Just shift the graph 1 to the right because then the two roots get moved 1 to the right. r plus 1 and s plus 1. So on Monday's quiz, what if I say uh, r minus 2 and s minus 2? Is that going to throw you off? No, then you shift the graph 2 to the left. How do you shift the graph 2 to the left? f of x plus 2, right? You just substitute x plus 2 for x. So this would be a faster way to do it than, because I, I know some of you did it by just using the quadratic formula and then doing it, but that, that, that takes a long time. It's so much faster. OK, the bell's going to ring already. So don't forget the quiz on Monday.